I, uh, this is amazing, Cosmoverse! Yeah! Woo! Man, I am stoked to be here, uh, especially after missing it last year. This is, this is incredible. Huge shout out to the organizers, to CryptoCito and the crew and all the staff for pulling all this together and, and to all of you. I mean, I, I, can't, even, I can't even believe what, we, what we've got going here. Um, do I have slides? No? Wing it? Bust into another rap? I've got a few teed up. Don't tempt me. All right. Oh, oops. Uh-oh. Let's back up. Hello. What do we got? Clock is ticking. No, it's not working. Hello. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. I see it here. All right, yeah. Technical difficulties overcome. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about the three phases of Cosmos. So, you know, I offered some reflections last week on my blog about, about what we're doing, um, what's been going on, and, and what it's all for. So I think the three phases look something like this. Initiation, this is the Big Bang. Integration, this is where we form solar systems, planets, it all comes together. And illumination, this is where we all achieve enlightenment, right? We're not ready for this yet, but if we do our job right during integration, um, maybe we can take off together. So we're here. It's September 2022. I think this is a transitional, pivotal moment for our project. We're transitioning from the initiation phase into the integration phase. So what was initiation all about? Well, you know, we wrote this white paper back in 2016. We've completed the white paper. I mean, we shipped it uh, last year, right? We, we gave birth to this new philosophy, the Cosmos philosophy, the Cosmos technology stack. We launched IBC. Now there's this thriving interchain ecosystem, right? We launched the Cosmos hub. We proved all of this stuff out, a new way of building blockchains. We built Tenement, you know, gold standard for blockchain consensus, Cosmos SDK, used by dozens of high-value projects, IBC, gold standard for blockchain interoperability. We changed the whole game. The Cosmos Hub proved a new model of building and deploying decentralized blockchain applications, right? And towards the later stages of the initiation phase, our development team became extremely decentralized. It's now one of the most, if not the most, decentralized development teams in the whole blockchain space, right? We've transformed the way the world thinks about building, operating, deploying, connecting blockchains. We changed the game. Right? We brought the interchain to life. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to all the, all the communities that stood up their own community computers. Yeah, hell yeah. Right? It's a fucking new internet. This is like ARPANET, you know, like 40 years ago or something. Like this is the dawn of something new, the community computer revolution, right? A new kind of relationship between communities and technologies. And we're on the frontier of that. And that's what initiation was all about. Cosmos, we're in a league of its own, I mean, uh, of our own. Like, is there any other ecosystem like this? I don't think so. You know, we're not, we're not competing with other blockchains. Other blockchains are out there battling for adoption. It, Cosmos is a struggle for self-expression. Sovereignty, interoperability, we say it all the fucking time, right? We're not competing with other blockchains. We're competing with legacy institutions of political economic expression. These institutions are thousands of years old, right? We, we, can't, we can't be naive enough to think we're just going to change them on a whim like that. This is a long-term project, right? And we can't pretend we know exactly what needs to be done. We don't. These are complex institutions. But we're going to learn, we're going to move slowly, and we're going to upgrade the whole institutional structure of the world for better sustainability. That's what this is all about. All right. That's the past. Now we're entering integration. What are the tasks ahead of us in integration, right? I think at a high level, we have, we have three broad things, and this is what we're going to talk about in the rest of this talk. First, better social coordination for public goods and for building institutions. Second, we need a strong Cosmos hub. And third, we need to prepare together for illumination, which requires us to mature our understandings of political economy, trust, the promises we make, money, and so on. So let's dive into it. Better social coordination. So as I mentioned, we've had an you know, extremely decentralized development team, massively growing, rapidly growing ecosystem. We have far outpaced the capacity of the institutions that we set up during the initiation phase to keep up and to steward things, right? One such institution is the ICF, the Interchain Foundation, the nonprofit we all know and love, right? Um, and I've been leading, you know, the, the ICF has been, it has a mission to be a long-term institution, to be around for the long term, has a mission to steward a secure, scalable, sustainable interchain supported and bootstrapped by the Cosmos Hub. And I've been leading an effort to professionalize and upgrade the structures of the ICF to make it more transparent, more operationally resilient, to bring in, uh, you know, more community engagement, to work with the broader community. And I'm proud to announce we are, we are setting up a new top-level governance body at the ICF called the Technical Advisory Board. It's going to be chaired by my good colleague, good friend, Zaki Manian here, who you're going to hear from very soon. 
and it, we're going to bring in executives from across the ecosystem to work together on technical and market strategy, on coordinating funding, and on stewarding the ICF's treasury for the long term. Right? And this is all about the public goods we're developing together, right? We, we, the, the Cosmos Hub community, the Atom community, has funded a huge amount of, cause of public goods that have created all this value for the whole ecosystem, right? And the time has come now, during the integration phase, to, to expand that table, to bring in additional communities to come in and to support, you know, to add resources, to support the strategy and the funding of these public goods so that we can work together for the long term, right? To build really sustainable, resilient, decentralized technologies to make all of this, uh, to take us all to the next level. Another part of that is we, we're, we're going to have to bring more and more of this coordination on chain, right? The state of tooling in the DAO ecosystem, the governance ecosystem, is just not good enough. And, and I don't know about you, but I don't feel like we can trust the other blockchain communities to take care of it. This is something Cosmos is going to have to do, because who else is going to do it, right? I mean, just like we transformed how we build blockchains, we're going to have to transform how we do governments, how we build organizations. And that requires us to understand what's involved in organizational building, you know, theories of organizational design. Organizations are all about the promises we make to one another, the accountability relationships, right? And the Cosmos Hub is in a position to really start to lead that, to be a place where we can work out these political economic considerations for the wider interchain, right? And, and, and in the upcoming Cosmos Hub paper, there are some proposals about the kinds of changes we need to make to the governance system and, and to the tooling to facilitate all of this. All right, speaking of the Cosmos Hub. This is what the Cosmos Hub looks like, all right? Nailed to the fucking cross, right? In order to ship, oops, sorry. In order to deliver on this vision of sovereignty and interoperability, the Cosmos Hub had to sacrifice itself for the sins of all the other blockchain ecosystems imposing rent-seeking economic models on their communities, okay? And so, and so it got nailed to the cross. It lapsed into martyrdom, right? But the time has come for the Cosmos Hub to step down off the cross and to take its rightful place among the blockchain interchain community. So how's it going to do that? Well, quietly, over the last year or so, new development teams have been forming around the Cosmos Hub. Informal Systems built a team to build this most acclaimed new feature, Interchain Security. The team at, uh, at Interchain Berlin built a team to focus on integrations, test nets, upgrades, governance. The team at Occlusion built a team to focus on liquid staking. And together, we've, we've excited new development, renewed velocity around the Cosmos Hub, and more teams coming together, Haifa and Strangelove and, and many more, and we're inviting you know, a broad contributor set to work together to take the Cosmos Hub to the next level. Part of that has been the development of two key new features that are going to change the game for the Cosmos Hub. Informal Systems built Interchain Security, and Occlusion built Liquid Staking. And together, these two features create a new layer for secure economic scaling that will change the way the Cosmos Hub can orient towards the rest of the interchain. And so we can come down off the cross and dance on the demons of ignorance, all right? According to modern theology, the great priestess Taylor Swift, these are the haters that we have to dance upon, all right? Come down off the cross and dance on the haters. So what does this look like? The Cosmos Hub renewed. We're growing a more resilient interchain. That's what it's all about, right? A, a, a new vision that we're articulating for the Cosmos Hub to, to take its position, to lead the interchain forward, to help it all grow, right? To preserve these values of sovereignty and, and interoperability, continue to change the game of blockchain design um, for the betterment of, of the world, ultimately, for, to enable greater political economic expression. That's what this is all about. So what does this look like? Well, we talked about this new secure economic scaling layer, these two pieces, interchain security and liquid staking. Right? With liquid staking, suddenly the staked atoms can start to become liquid, they can start to be used within the wider ecosystem. With interchain security, for the first time, the development ecosystem opens up around the Cosmos Hub. Right? You no longer need to ship code directly to the Cosmos Hub to have it deployed within the Cosmos Hub's community and security perimeter. Right? You can now launch chains, consumer chains, using interchain security that can build you know, new kinds of applications, that can extend the functionality of the Cosmos Hub and open up all kinds of new opportunities for development. And so above this secure economic scaling layer, what's being proposed in the upcoming white paper are, are two new product components that are hub-specific, that build on top of this secure layer, that offer new value-added services and functionality to enable the Cosmos Hub to lead the interchain. And these are the interchain scheduler and the interchain allocator. And I'll say just a little bit about them, but Zaki is going to go into much more detail, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. 
So with this new world opened up by interchain security, all these new chains deployed under the security of the Cosmos Hub, there's going to be new demands for guarantees over block space. Block space construction, the ordering of transactions. We've seen in the Ethereum community and the interchain community at large, the emergence of MEV, MEV relayers and, and marketplaces, all this activity happening off-chain. The proposal for the interchain scheduler is to bring that marketplace on-chain, to develop an on-chain market for future block space, beginning with the chain secured by the Cosmos Hub under interchain security, but expanding afterwards out to the wider interchain, providing this scheduling services, this, this block space market to the wider interchain. And with the fees accrued from that, can be flowed back into the Cosmos Hub and used for whatever purpose the Cosmos Hub desires. And they can also flow into this other component, the interchain allocator, which is being designed to facilitate new kinds of economic coordination, incentive alignment, and liquidity provisioning, and bootstrapping for new chains. There's a lot more to say about both of those things but I will leave it to Zaki. Now, the other, the other thing that happens here is with interchain security and liquid staking, this new secure economic layer, it reduces the need for exponential issuance to modulate the tension between security and liquidity when the amount staked on the hub is above the two-thirds staking target, which means the floor is open for the hub to consider how it wants to adjust or change or adapt its issuance model. And there is a proposal in the paper for a very concrete change to make to the issuance to reduce it. But it will be up to the Cosmos Hub community to consider that, to debate it, to deliberate on it, to adapt it, and ultimately to adopt it to its needs, right? The issuance, it can be reduced. It can be allocated to other sources. It can be directed in new ways. The floor is open for this community to figure out exactly what it wants to do about it. But I'd like to remind you Issuance alone does not equal soundness. There's a lot of memeing in the blockchain space about sound money, our, our good friends at Ethereum talking about ultrasound money, all this kind of nonsense. Let me ask you a question. If some money burns down in the dark forest, does that make it sound? No, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think that's enough. Maybe it makes some noise. Maybe a bunch of people will make a bunch of noise about it, but is that all there is to soundness? I understand soundness as a kind of sustainability of our political economic communities. And clearly, issuance alone isn't enough to achieve that, right? Maybe it's a part of it, but it's certainly not the whole story. If we're actually going to achieve sound political economy, it will require ongoing exploration, collaboration across the community, right? It will require us to be adaptive, to continue to evolve. This isn't the final word, right? Well, we would need to continue to evolve issuance and other kinds of aspects of the system over time to respond to changing needs. Because that's what, that's what political, sound, sustainable political economy is all about. Okay, a lot of people think about the security offered by blockchains just in purely economic terms. But, but hopefully you can see from everything I've been saying, blockchain security is political economic security. It's not just economic. We, if we're really going to get serious about building robust, sustainable, decentralized organizations and communities, we have to get serious about the political components of that, about the ways we have to work together to do all this. Just shouting decentralization isn't enough. Really, we really have to work on new mechanisms for aligning and for building relationships and for accountability and for working together. And there's a lot, a lot of work to do there. It's easy, seemingly, to reason about economic security. It's a lot more difficult and complex to reason about political economic security. But that is the task for the integration phase. Now, when, it, when we think about political economy, one, way, one, one thing I can offer is that we can consider that these are complex systems of promises, right? What kinds of guarantees are the institutions providing you that you can depend on? What are the systems of accountability for enforcing them, right? It's all about the promises that the institutions make and, and, and what you can depend on. And our blockchain systems are very, are very similar, right? They offer certain kinds of guarantees that you're supposed to be able to verify. You know, don't trust verify, as people like to say, right? So they're sort of extensions of the political economies that we, that we live in, but in, you know, more cryptographic, crypto-economic terms. But even in our blockchain systems, we find that there are areas where we underspecify the system, right? And for instance, our mempools provide very uh, minimal guarantees over ordering of transactions. And this has opened up the whole space of MEV, right? And so if we can get clearer about the guarantees we're trying to provide within our protocols, right? Perhaps if we had more distributed systems engineers trained in formal verification that were working on these kinds of systems, maybe we'd have much stronger guarantees, much stronger invariants that we could rely on, right? 
And, and, and that's what thinking about promises is all about, the invariance that, that you're offering. Right? But this is not just about our blockchains, our societies, it's also about our organizations. Right? Organizations can be understood as systems of promises. And at our own organization, Informal Systems, we've been developing a language for talking about promise-making, accountability, that allows us to iterate and understand our expectations, our shared consensual expectations that we're all that we're all operating under, right? We put up a guide, workflow.informal.systems, and I think a big part of the integration phase is adopting language like this and using it to better coordinate, better align our expectations and our promises to one each other so that we can actually build great things. Now, this is also gonna require a new understanding of money, right? A big part of political economy is, is money, and no one really seems to understand money. And I've been trying, I don't understand it yet, uh, but we're getting somewhere. And, and at Informal, we're taking a new approach to understanding money that also rests in promise making, right? You understand money as a system of promises that weaves together communities, right? And allows them to express uh, obligations to each other and other kinds of promises. And we're looking at where those promises occur within the broader economy. And we're calling this approach collaborative finance, co-fi, right? Moving away from DeFi, decentralized finance. It's not just about decentralization, it's about collaboration and, and community. And, and we believe this new approach, it will be the foundation for future political economies that will be much more sustainable and that beginning with Cosmos and the, and the Cosmos Hub, we can work towards by really taking serious, seriously this process of integration and understanding the promises we're making to each other and, and how we need to evolve this together. All right, that will finally take us to the illumination phase where we can all become enlightened together, where perhaps we can all think about how we're organized in, in cooperative ways, where perhaps the Cosmos Hub becomes a cooperative of other blockchains, where your organizations become cooperative of your employees, where the states we build are cooperatives of substates, and where our international institutions are cooperatives of the states that compose them. And with that, I close. Thank you so much for being here. Love all of you. See you in the integration phase.